everybody, my name's Julia from Bobbins and Buttons and today I've got a tutorial to share with you for how to make a canther stitched um, scarf using scrap fabrics both on the outside and on the inside. I really love the traditional Indian technique of canther stitching and one of the things I really love about it is that they use old saris um, that are ripped and, and damaged and they layer them up and stitch through them um, to create this new piece of fabric. So it gave me the idea of, of using um, old toiles because I'll often make a, a toile of a garment um, to test the fit before I make the real thing and I'll use um, old damaged fabrics like threadbare sheets or um, calico uh, is another common fabric to use for, for toiles. So I'll, I'll use that, but there's always the question, once you've finished with a toile, what to do with it so that it doesn't become waste. So this was a little bit experimental, but I filmed the process of making this um, so that if it worked I could share the tutorial. So I'm going to share that now. So I've chosen to um, do a, a kind of tonal green on one side and then um, navy on the other side. So what I've got here is like I said a selection of um, old garments and pieces left over from previous projects. You often find when you've made a project that you've got sort of a large chunk left which is is too big and too nice to throw away but not big enough to make another garment out of. So it's perfect for a project like this. So um, that's what I've got here and like I said I've bought in a couple of old shirts from charity shops just so that I can make the colour mix how I want it to look. So what I've done to start with is create a really simple template. This is literally just a rectangle of um, paper. I've used a slightly heavier weight paper. It's the width that I want the finished scarf plus 1.5 seam allowances on either side and it's quarter of the finished length of the scarf. So what I'm planning to do now is use this template to draw onto the fabrics um, and I may not be able to get the full size out of each piece of fabric because obviously they're all scraps. So I've folded it um, and I'm going, I just plan to try and create as many pieces as I can until I get to my finished length um, of this width. So I might use this as the pattern or I might even use the quarter of it as the pattern. So I'm going to see how I get on and how much I can cut from what I've got here. So I'm going to take my first piece of fabric and straight away I can see that it's too small to, to take the whole template as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swing that round. That fits better that way. And if I fold this down, I can get... Folding it in half would still waste quite a bit, so I'm actually going to fold this a bit further up um, and take as much fabric to the right shape as I can. So I'm just going to check that they're nice and lined up on either side. And now I'm going to weigh this down with a few weights. And I'm going to draw around it. So we're keeping it nice and square because it'll make the sewing together a lot easier and I'm just taking this chalk marker and drawing around the edge of that. So now I can take my weights off, take the template off and I've got a nice line that I can just cut round, keep that nice and even. I'll just move those little scraps out of the way and we'll keep those for another project. And that's our first piece cut. So now I'm just going to bring in the next piece. This is actually quite a large piece, so I might even be able to get my full 
yeah, I feel like I can get my full length there. Let's just have a look. I'm going to be looking at getting the most economical lay out of it so that the other pieces of scrap can be used for another project and that might just be the best way to use this. So again I'm going to weigh this down, this time I'm going to use the whole quarter template so that's going to take up a, a large proportion of the back of the scarf and I'm going to repeat what I did with the other piece and just draw around the edges with chalk and cut that piece out. Incidentally, if you haven't come across these um, chalk markers before, they're really good. I mean, I particularly like these Chaco markers, but they have a little wheel um, that creates, uh, sort of lets the, the chalk dust out, which is inside this channel here, which can be refilled when they've run out. And they make a really nice fine line, so it's much nicer than the tailor's chalks, which break and the lines get thick and heavy. Um, so I would recommend those. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And what I quite like to do is just trim off these really little bits and put those in a pile of tiny pieces and keep the larger piece because clearly there's a lot here that can be used for something else or maybe for another panel of this same scarf. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carry on cutting pieces out um, until I've got the finished length that I want in the blue side and then I'm going to repeat the whole process with the green side and I'm just going to keep measuring the pieces as I cut and, until I've got to the length that I want the finished scarf to be. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly show you cutting out one of the garments that I've got because I've got this um, shirt and this is my favourite that I want to um, have most of this fabric on the green side because this is my favourite of the fabrics I've got in green. Um, obviously there's lots of bits when you've got a garment that you can keep for other projects so I'm going to take off all the buttons um, and save those for something else um, and I'm going to probably use the back because I want a really large chunk of this but I'm also planning to cut open the sleeves and use the fabric from those. Um, because this is check, I want to try and keep the checks straight. So let's have a look how this is best going to work. So I'm laying the pattern on. Um, I don't really want the seam allowances, the side seams in it. Um, so I've got two choices here. I could either fold this so I avoid the seam allowances and bring that in a little bit or I could place it this way on to the garment but what I'm actually going to do I think is cut along the um, side seams and around the armhole along the seam lines just so that I can lay the fabric a bit flatter and see how best to use it. So I'm just going to carefully cut on the seam line. And around the armhole. I'm just sticking to the seam, allow seam allowances so that I'm not using any fabric that could be used for the scarf. And there's one sleeve. Let's just have a look at the back piece now. Like I said, I quite like a big piece of this. So that fits quite nicely. I can go down to this corner here. So I'm going to go with that. That's a quarter of the scarf used. So again, I'm going to weigh that down and draw around it. I'm lining my pattern piece up to the checks to keep that nice and square. Okay, 
then taking that off, taking off my pattern and I'm going to cut along those lines now. So what I'm going to do now is go away and cut out all the rest of the pieces until I've got enough panels to make the length of the, the scarf in, in both the green side and the blue side. So I'm going to work a little bit differently with the calico and this is what's going to be inside the scarf so this is like the interlining that's going to give it the, the thickness. Um, and, but this is really the purpose of this project, I wanted to use up all these old twirls that just have drawing all over them. It really doesn't matter what they look like, they're, they're twirls, they've got pen marks all over it um, and it's it, that's the, really the idea of this, just to get rid of these pieces of fabric that don't seem like they're any use for anything else. Um, but I'm going to treat this a bit differently than the, the front. I am going to use the template as a bit of a guide but I'm going to allow it to be a bit bigger and cut it down to size after I've made the scarf pieces up. So all I want really is some straight lines so you can do that with the edge of the template or you could use a ruler um, but you, you need to be aware of the rough size so I'm going to go with that and draw a line here. Obviously I've got a different colour marker for this one and I'm going to cut that. I can see that's easily big enough for my scarf panel. So I don't want this band on the top here so I'm just going to cut that piece away. but I do want a straight line here so I'm just going to draw a straight line along here so we can keep it at right angles and then draw across avoiding that seam. I'm not going to cut that like I said I'll just leave the edges on I'm just trying to keep it squared um, so I'm going to cut that piece off it's come a little bit close to that seam but it's, it's fine so now I'm going to cut another piece the same as that and I'll show you how I'm going to sew them together so here's a piece well here's three pieces of calico that I've cut nice straight lines and then I've literally butted the edges up and zigzagged over the edges. So this edge here is a nice straight cut line and I can place the next piece next to that and I'm literally going to butt them up as close as I can. They might fractionally overlap but as little as possible and it doesn't matter if this doesn't seem too strong because we're going to be doing the camphor stitching across the whole scarf so that will stabilise it and it will all be internal inside the scarf anyway. So I've now completed cutting out all my panels. Um, I ended up finding that I had um, enough of the main fabrics that I really liked to make the whole scarf so I've stuck with just um, a minimal amount of different types of fabric in each panel. Um, I can't show you the whole thing because I can't pan out far enough but um, what I've done is I measured the length and all the pieces added up to the final length that I wanted the scarf to be. So all I've done is stitch the panels together. I laid it all out, decided how I wanted the panels to look um, and as you can see I've chosen to just to insert some small pieces of the mint green. I've got a nice large piece of this fabric and a large piece of this fabric. So I've joined them all up just using a 1.5 seam allowance um, to create 
the green side and then I did the same with the blue side and I did the full length of the calico um, twirls and joined those together but I left them wider than the width of the scarf so let me show you that so here is the calico with the blue and what I've done is I've just laid the blue on top of the calico and just pinned it on but before I did that I just pressed it so that it sat nice and flat um, over the calico and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place right sides together with the green on top of the blue and I'm going to pin around the edge I'm going to leave trimming down the calico until after I've pinned this in place so what I've done is I've pinned the green on top of the blue and I've just smoothed it down I've anchored it along one edge and then I've smoothed it this way and so all the time I'm just smoothing it out um, before I trim it so I've put the pins in this way just because I felt like um, I could uh, maneuver it a little bit better and now that I've got it all completely pinned I'm going to trim down the calico and I'm just going to do some measurements to check that this is all even because I want to try and keep it as square um, an even width as possible before I stitch it and once I'm happy with that I'm just going to simply stitch around the edge leaving an opening at some point um, probably where there's less seams to turn it through so I've pinned that round um, I just wanted to say that um, I am trying to just be a bit careful about the um, keeping it level although it doesn't really matter it is meant to potentially look like a bit of a rustic kind of scarf but it's going to have a tendency to move probably a bit more easily than if it was just one piece of fabric so that's why I'm just trying to be a bit careful because I still want it to look like it's a carefully made piece of work when I've finished um, so that's what I'm aiming for so I'm going to go ahead and stitch that and then we'll turn it through there we go all stitched so what I'm going to do now just before I trim anything is I'm just going to turn it over because it'll be easier to see because I've stitched it in the darker colour um, and I'm going to just measure at certain points to see if it's pretty much the same distance all the way down um, because at this stage I could tweak it a little bit if it's, if it's out by much. Um, and it's very easy on a large thing like this to oh, we've got a little bit of a flip there so we can sort that out but yeah that's all within sort of three or four mil so I'm happy with that so I'm going to just trim off the corners to remove some bulk off each corner and then I'm just going to go round and trim away the calico from the seam so the seam aren't, is, aren't so bulky but I'm going to leave it at that and then I'm just going to turn it through and press it and then it's going to be ready for the camphor stitching so I'm going to carry on and do that all the way round and I'm just going to probably unpick that little bit that's flipped up and just let that um, slide back into position so that's trimmed I actually managed to just clip away that bit that had flipped up so I'm just going to turn the whole thing through to the right side now through the the gap that I left if I can find it there it is still a few pins left that held the blue part to the calico so I need to be careful not to stab myself and also to take those out when I've turned it through there we go let's just have a look at those pins take those off and what I'm going to do now is go and press it and get all the edges nice and even here um, and then we can slip stitch the little gap 
closed and it's just left for the canter stitching which I'll show you next. all the pins out. Just get your corners out nicely. I like to sometimes just wrap the corner, push it through with your thumb like that and you can always just take a pin and tweak the corner if it's not come out neatly. So the scarf is all turned through and pressed and ready for embroidery stitching. So I've made a start on the um, canther stitching so that you can see how it's looking. So a few things before you start. Um, you might want to just tack the piece together um, to stabilise it and stop it from moving around. I actually decided not to do this because with the calico in the centre and using cotton on both sides it's quite um, it's quite stable anyway and I felt like I could manage it okay um, and so far it's been fine but if you do feel a bit worried about it moving about you can just put some large tacking stitches in regular cotton um, throughout the piece just to hold it together. I'd recommend using a strong contrast so that you can see the threads easily and pull them out when you've finished. I chose to um, do my stitching with DMC um, Perle number no. 5 threads. These are nice and silky and, and nice and thick as well but there's no reason why you shouldn't use stranded cotton or any other embroidery thread. When it comes to the needle you want to choose a needle with a a wide eye so it's easy enough to thread and then have a sharp point because obviously you've got to stitch through quite um, dense fabric so you need to make sure it's sharp enough to do that. Canther stitch is essentially a, a running stitch so it's a very easy stitch to do but like I said I'm not an, em, um, an embroidery expert or a canther expert. There are lots of um, books on embroidery and canther stitching if you want to do some further reading but for this I just wanted to um, experiment and try the technique and um, really see how it worked. So when I started stitching I just um, found a, a, a stitch that I felt was easy for me to carry on achieving um, and get into a bit of a rhythm with. So this is probably a little bit larger than you might see if you look at some canther stitching but I felt like it was easy for me to get into the flow with this um, and I'm quite happy with how it's looking. So I'll just show you a little bit of how I'm doing this stitching. So essentially it really is just um, piercing the top of the fabric and bringing, bringing the needle in a little bit further along and then I've found that you can do a few stitches in one go and just pull the needle up. So I'm going in through the top along the stitch length and then piercing it again just to keep on making that stitch. So it's quite quick to do so you'll get a lot done in a short space of time. But I think because this fabric's quite dense and thick I didn't want to do a smaller stitch than this because it just felt quite difficult to achieve. So I'm happy with this kind of length and it feels easy to, to stitch. It's just in through the top and along. So the one thing that I have struggled slightly with is um, fastening and starting on. So I'll show you how I've started to do that. I couldn't really find much information online and I didn't want to tie knots because I felt like they'd look a little bit messy. 
So I'll show you when I get to the end of this thread how I start and finish a new piece of thread. So my thread's getting a little bit short to carry on now so what I'm doing to fasten off is doing a stitch but I'm just um, sending the needle into the middle of the fabric so it's not coming out the other side I'm just um, placing it in between the layers of fabric and then I'm bringing it out where my, net, my new stitch would be and I'm just doing the tiniest stitch there but just through the top two layers and then gauging where I would bring out the next stitch so that's just doing a tiny stitch I'm not even sending that through to the other side at this stage so I'm just pushing that through so there's a tiny stitch there and then do the same again here so there's a tiny stitch there and now I'm just bringing out the thread somewhere further down and just trimming that off pulling it slightly so that that thread will just recede inside the scarf and I feel like that will those two tiny little stitches and then the length down there will hold um, will hold the, the thread and now I'm going to rejoin over the top of those so again that will reinforce the stitching there as well so now I've got my new length threaded so what I'm going to do this time is put the um, the needle and thread in a few centimetres below where I want the um, stitching to start and bring it out somewhere where there'll be a stitch and just work backwards doing what I just did so the thread sinks in between the layers in the scarf now I'm going to do a tiny little stitch through through the middle layers and bring the needle out at that point where I fastened off. Now I'm going to do a tiny stitch right the way through the whole piece so I'm just bringing the needle up where I fastened off and now I'm going to do a stitch there and then bring the needle up where that tiny stitch, the next tiny stitch is from fastening off and cover those tiny stitches with the new stitch and it's it's virtually a seamless join there you can see a tiny little knot but on the other side there's nothing to see either so very very uh, neat join. I'm not sure if that's how they do it in continuous canther like this but it's the only method I've found that seemed to be neat and secure. So let me just show you how this looks on the other side. So you can see the... I chose navy because I wanted it to look quite tonal and have a navy overall um, sort of uh, look. So that's how it looks on the navy side and that, that's how it looks on the green side. So I'm going to carry on and finish that and show you the finished scarf. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial um, and maybe it sparked a few ideas for what to do with those old textiles that you thought had no further use. Um, I think there's quite a few ideas you could do with this. Maybe different weights of fabrics and different sort of textures of fabrics could be layered up as well and it would also make into lots of different um, products like bags or jackets or even just like a pocket if you wanted to use um, just do a small piece and add it to a plain jacket as a little decorative feature that might look quite nice. Mm -hmm.